It's over 9,000! Yeah, yeah, I, I had to do the joke. <laughs> uh, huh. Apparently it's only, only about 19. Yeah, so this vlog is about this channel news slash vlog, vlog yeah, I can't talk. Um, is about my experience at PAX East, which, um, where do I begin? Uh, so my friend Coin and I, we were actually a little late and we got in around 10.30, I think. Um, we, I missed a certain turn on the way into the place and then I took uh, the train in from Wonderland uh, in Massachusetts. And um, it was huge, uh, absolutely huge. Like the the entire scope, everything. Like I'm, uh, I'm trying to say, I'm trying to be coherent with this. Um, okay, uh, first thing, um, I got to play a little Splatoon. You know, the uh, multiplayer game that Nintendo's coming out with for the Wii U, and uh, that's a that's kind of like their own version of a multiplayer shooter, but it's more like um, paintball. I get paintball mixed with like. Um, well, the, if you, those of you who don't know, the point of the game is to cover as much of that map in your team's ink as possible, while also trying to get rid of some of the other main team players while they're doing it. But that's not really the focus. You actually earn points not by killing enemy players. You get by covering as much of the map in your ink as, and you get like uh, super special weapons and stuff and um, my experience it, first of all it was an hour wait in line to get into the they should call this convention the uh, line con because of yeah a stupid joke there um, it was just it was a long wait um, I got to play the game and it was okay like um, I, I definitely like the aspects of the game I like the turf Turf War, which is kind of like their version of uh, Team Deathmatch, only you cover, like I said before, uh, cover the map in ink, and I don't know, something about the controls I didn't like, like, it, you have to use the gamepad, like, I don't, I haven't seen any talk about, what the fuck is up with this, eh, eh, there we go, what's up with that, you have to use the gamepad, you, there, I don't think, the only, Place you can use the Wii U Pro Controller is the local multiplayer, I believe. Um, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments section below. But every article I looked up um, for, as far as gameplay, you had to use uh, the, the gamepad. And I just, I'm not a big fan of the gamepad. I have the, yeah, mirror. I have the thing, and I don't really like using it. It, it just feels so uncomfortable and so bulky use and it, it really showed when I was playing Splatoon because it utilizes the gyroscope in the controller for aiming up and down. I mean you can use the right stick with the left stick but that only goes like eh, eh, and, and you pretty much have to use every single part which sounds cool but is very uncomfortable and awkward to use at least at least it was for me and um, unless they give you support, and one of the reasons I they put that in there is because with the gamepad itself, that you have the map on the gamepad on the yeah screen, and you can use like the super jump to jump to a certain part of the map and uh, jump a little bit farther. And I didn't like it. I just didn't like that aspect. It was fun, but I just felt like I was limited by the controller itself. I felt like I wasn't utilizing everything I could be because I was limited by having to make sure I hold the controller in some way instead of just being able to just sit there and play while I was standing, but still. And, um, yeah, that was, that was fun. But, uh, let's get, let's get on to, uh, the other stuff. Um, I, I met a few people there I was really looking forward to meet. Um, one of them was uh, Matt and Wooly from Super Best Friends Play. Uh, I didn't see Pat or Liam. Um, uh, you, you guys, if you don't, if you haven't been following me on my Twitter or my Facebook, I posted pictures on it. But I'll probably put it over here, like pro over this as a like cover. But they were funny. They were like I, I only stopped them for like a split second. We did a little joke that like we were trying to eat the camera, and, and Wooly was just like, yeah, whatever. I just take a picture with you, man. 
and, uh, that, and that was fun. It was it was nice getting a picture with him. And then uh, who was it later? Um, uh, it's hard to keep track of them all. Um, I met John Tron. I was he was the person. I he was one of two people that I was really excited about seeing at this con. And when I heard that, when I had heard on the PAX East website that that was a glitch or some type of error they had on there about having him at the con, I was really disappointed because he was one of the people I wanted to see so badly. And so I was disappointed there. But then he suddenly showed up at the con one during, un, like unannounced, like nobody knew he was going to be there. And I was like, yes, yes, thank you, God. And. Uh, we went to I went to stand in line for him, uh, but unfortunately the line was capped at the time, and they weren't allowed any people in. But so he went to go he had to go to an appointment, which is why they had to cap off the line. <clears throat> but then I I was just standing around there trying to figure out what to do next, and then I heard that he was going to be coming back after that. But then he actually came back earlier because his next appointment had been canceled. So I got to talk to about talk to him about. It. Talked to him about some of the stuff. Like I, I talked to him about how he's helped out a great deal with keeping my spirits up. Him, nostalgia critic, everybody I pretty much watch on YouTube. That's hilarious. He, uh, John Tron always makes me laugh. Like um, I think it was the Japanese shoot 'em ups video that made me. I laughed so hard I couldn't breathe. Uh, and I told him how all this stuff going on with my mom, and he and he gave me some. He just said to keep my spirits up, and he hopes everything works out for the best. And uh, he 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 wishes me good wishes, which I know is pretty much the generic thing you have to say to somebody in that kind of situation. But it's still nice to hear. It it really is nice to hear. Whether you're just trying to be nice, um, it's still nice. It's still good to hear. But on to more uh, optimistic news, um, and then I, and then uh, who was it? I met uh, the angry video game nerd. He's gonna take you back to the past to play the shitty games that suck ass. He'd rather have a buffalo. Yeah, I'm not gonna do the whole thing. Uh, you guys know the theme if you if you if you know anything about the internet. And uh, I had my scouter thing on from DBZ. He thought it was the R Zone. Um, forget those of you who don't know what the R Zone is. It was check out um, the Angry Video Games Nerds uh, video on Tiger Games, or Tiger Electronic Games, because it's funny. And I asked him to uh, I actually have the autograph right here. I asked him to sign two RPM from the fucking nerd. If you can read it right there. I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get a frame for this and poster him. And I got a picture with him. I'll probably put it like right here. And that was that was awesome. <laughs> was, I got. I made the joke nine, over nine thousand joke with him because it was, I just had to. And that was that was awesome meeting him. Um, Pat the NES, NES Punk was there too. If you, uh, check out the our um, Nintendo World Championship uh, episode of uh, Angry Video Game Nerd who know him, who he is. He also worked with Brental Flaws, but I was kind of strapped for time, so I wasn't able to say hi to him as much as I wanted to, and I feel kind of bad because he wasn't really getting as much attention as uh, James Rolf at the Angry Video Game Nerd AFGN. I felt kind of bad for him and that I know he he's still a big celebrity on the internet kind of it but um if you're watching this uh Pat I, I hope I see you in the next bubble and throw it's not like Tom Hanks for a second there uh, I hope I see you at ne the next PAX East so I can say hi to you properly and stuff because I always check out your podcasts and stuff um but yeah that was awesome just being able to meet the, the AVGN the guy who pretty much started the video game video game uh, centric videos on YouTube and pretty much who pretty much started the whole online entertaining reviews thing. He was the guy who pretty much inspired the nostalgia critic. If you I'm not sure if I uploaded this back at Kin at Kinetic.com, but he said that when he saw James doing all this stuff on YouTube, he was like, "Oh, maybe what I can do will work then too." And so he pr really is influential on the entire YouTube community and it was just so awesome to get his autograph and to meet him. Um, and I, I know I'm, I, I believe I'm forgetting somebody, but who am I forgetting? I, there's so much to go on. Um, I think I got everything. Yeah, Matt, Wooly, Jontron. 
I oh yeah, uh, HMK. Who you, those of you who don't know who HMK is? He is uh, he's he's this guy who does uh, videos centered on Legend of Zelda and uh, Kingdom Hearts, which are two of my favorite King or uh, game franchises ever. I'm not gonna say which is higher because I I kind of plan on doing a top ten list of my favorite game franchises in the future. But some of you might already know if you know me in real life. It's pretty obvious, but. I really wanted to meet him because I saw on Twitter he was going to be there and I just liked meeting some of the big but not too big YouTubers because they give me some of the most hope for the future with my channel and stuff and I wanted to chat with him but when I saw him he was in the, I was in the line for Splatoon and I had already been in there for like an hour waiting to get to play the game so I was like maybe I'll see him later. And I didn't. I didn't get. To, I did see him later, but that was at the John Tron panel, and he was over in the um, Polaris Lounge, and I wasn't able to talk to him because he was talking with other people. So I was a little disappointed. And um, HMK, if you're watching this, uh, I hope to see you next year. Um, thank you for recommending Pax East to me, by the way. Like um, during the Super Bowl, uh, he was talking about how everybody should be excited about Pax East and stuff like that, and I was like, aren't they sold out and stuff? Because I was interested, and he said, well, go on eBay. So. I, I did, and thank you. I, I know it's arbitrary and all that, but uh, thank you, HMK. I hope to, I hope to meet, see you again next year, or I hope to see you next year. But what, what's, the, um, what's the thing I have to take away from this whole thing? I'll talk about something later, but one day was not enough. I only went for one day because that was all I could afford afford on eBay because of all the scalpers who bought up all the three-day passes and crap. I, I actually paid over a hundred bucks for my pass and my friend's pass and that was ridiculous and I ironically the only game I played there was Splatoon because I was just so caught up in trying to see everything and everyone that I did not have time. So next year, I as soon as they go on sale for PAX East next year, I am grabbing the three-day pass because I want to. I need to be have more time to play these games and to meet everybody because that one day was was not enough. Was I I ran I missed so many things because of all the stuff I had to do. I, I I wasn't able to do the Oculus one because the line for the Oculus was wasn't really long, but there was a three-hour wait if you got on the line. A three you had to wait. You would have to have waited three hours to use to test out the thing and I was like as much as I want to try out the thing I want to experience everything else in the con more while I have it so and sorry if this is getting a little long and stuff I'm trying to go as fast as I can with this and so that was fun I bought a few things I bought the scouter I bought a copy of the angry video game nerd movie I bought some t-shirts I um, but yeah, that was uh, that was that was great. And then I ended the night by uh, well, my friend Coy and I we went to uh, this concert that Brentel Floss was doing in a separate theater, and that was great. Like, oh man, that was that was just awesome. That, it, w it really was. You got to talk with him. I talk. I he did a few of his songs like Doctor Mario with lyrics, uh, Ducktales with lyrics, uh, Earthbound, not Earth, not Earthbound, uh, Bioshock with lyrics, and he he did this funny little thing at the end where it was kind of like. The song "Let It Go" from Frozen with Matt, like Mad lived with all, like, uh, dirty, like, dirty language, or like there was mention of dildos. Um, I'll put it at the end of this video because that, that's something I have. I want you guys to see because that was hilarious. It re it was. <laughs> I can't really explain it. And then uh, afterwards, I got to talk to my guy's autograph. I got like I got him to. Yeah. <laughs> eh. I, ho I hope you can read that. I'm, but I got a picture with him too. I'll put it like right here and stuff. And uh, I got just, I got and also I got an album from him, his, his uh, philosophy one. And uh, we we talked for a bit because he had a, there was somewhat of a long line to him. We talked about how one of my favorite songs from him that recently came out was the uh, the Ballad of Jet. Jeff from Earthbound, that song I really love. It's it's, but he and he said he appreciates because not many people like it when he does that kind of thing because of 
it's not really comedy or oriented and it's, it was more of a melancholy tone to it and I said I really liked it and he said and it's I guess it sometimes it can mean a little bit more to, I, I can understand because it me, probably means a little bit more to you to go outside of the comedy and try and do stuff that you really feel for I guess would be the way to say it and uh, we talked a bit about how how hard how, how it, it's an interesting transition for him not having a girlfriend that he because he broke up with his girlfriend that he had, had had been in a relationship for the past four years so it was hard I can imagine how hard that would be having somebody that was that big part of your life for so long not having him in your life anymore and oh dear god is that getting on to 17 minutes almost Yeesh, I better wrap this up uh, but you you can end it now because I'm just going to talk about the channel that, but oh wait no I'm going to say one more thing yeah just it was so much of a big experience there were so many people there so many shops so much to do and so little time i did not i needed more i needed more more than one day and there were people i knew from my past jobs that i worked with who were there but i never saw them uh if you're watching this henry tom brett um give you a shout out here and hopefully i'll see you at the next year's uh, PAX East, um, uh, but now on to the channel news. Um, you're probably wondering what's going on with my top 10 list and my gaming channel. Um, I'll start with the gaming channel. Um, I still plan on doing it, I just, I want to start it out in the right way. I have plans for this channel, uh, for the gaming channel that I want to, I want to implement Little things in it that would make it different from other Let's Plays. Um, a little bit more of a comedy spin to it, I guess. Uh, I'm still going to be just talking normally while I'm playing games, and, that, and it's just going to be... I'm not going to monetize it. It's just, like I said, that whole thing with the copyright situation, especially with the, what Nintendo is doing. Ugh. As for my top ten list, um, I just haven't had time, guys. I, I've been so focused... I'm taking care of my mom that I haven't had time like um, every free day I've got I've gotten I take her to the hospital for this appointment or that appointment that I just I don't have time I don't have I'm mentally exhausted and I'm physically exhausted especially the mentally and um, I got some bad news the other day so I, I don't know. I, if you still want me to do that, I'm giving you this option. I have, I have one top ten list. I started, I never finished, but I got most of like the number one pick done. And I got to film and record the other stuff. That is my top ten guilty pleasures of 2014. And uh, if you still want me to do it, if you still want me to make the video and record the rest of the lines and stuff, drop me a like, just so I know. Thumbs down, yeah, do a thumbs down. Um, drop me a like and I will finish it eventually. But um, I'm dedicated pretty much to my mom right now because of everything that's going on with her. Um, so yeah, I know this is way too long but yeah, if you want me to still do that top ten list, I've got, I got already got the picks that, or um, picks of one through ten of, or one through five. I mean, because it's only like five choices I did because that's the only guilty pleasures I had for the year. But um, yeah, if you still want me to do it, drop me a like or comment or whatever. Just say that you want me to still do it, and I will try and get that done as soon as I can over the next few months. I know I only have like 19 subscribers, but I still, I, I feel so terrible not being able to live up to your expectations, because, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm, this video has dragged on long enough as it is, and, yeah, I, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just wailing on, I'm wailing on, yup, <laughs> yup, sorry, I had to do the goofy laugh, I liked it, so, yeah, guys, um, I'll catch you in the next uh, channel news or vlog or whatever. Um, uh, and here's uh, Bernal Floss with his rendition of Let It Go. See ya. Then to fill in all the operative words with your awful, awful ideas. <laughs> Here we go.
the glow in the dark vibrator glows white on Zul's rectum tonight. Not a footprint to be seen. A kingdom of piss. And it looks like I'm the queen. Um, the fart is howling like the swirling testicular torsion inside. Gonna never bother me anyway. <laughs>